Alright, so, um, it was just announced, uh, that the next Halloween movie, the last in the, uh, I don't know what, what trilogy this is, the third Halloween trilogy, um, is going to be released day and date with Peacock, like the last movie. Um, this has been seen as in, uh, at least by fans and people who really have no place talking about things like this, like me. Um, it's kind of an odd move, um, like, uh, Universal leaving money on the table, uh, but, um, the reason why they're doing it, the reason why I guess they, uh, they chose to announce it now, um, I'd say is because of the, uh, Orphan 2, or the prequel movie, Orphan, uh, First Kill, that came out last weekend. Uh, it seems to have uh, not been played in uh, legal theaters from, at least not in my area, from what I've seen. Uh, and it's gotten a uh, sort of limited release in only, I think, a little under 500 theaters. Um, but the per theater average for Orphan 2, uh, or Orphan First, it's not really a sequel, it's a prequel. I'm just going to call it Orphan, um, is, was high last weekend. Um, it was actually the second highest per theater average of that weekend, um, behind only uh, Dragon Ball. It actually beat Beast in terms of PTA. Um, and of course, uh, I'm all talking about um, the American box office. Um, but... Yeah, that's kind of a big deal because Orphan was um, only uh, was released day and date on Paramount Plus, hence why it didn't get released at Regal. Um, it must have been a um, you know a contract thing. Uh, in situations like this, uh, it's common for well, not not common. Uh, there's not really a precedent for this still. But um, it's not uncommon for a theater chain to um, back out of distribution of a day and date release. Um, now, I mean, Universal seems to have had more success in um, having uh, in, um, in day and date releases uh, with. Um, so I'm saying I'm a lot. I'm, uh, this is unscripted. I'm going off the um, off the dome here. But the last Halloween movie was day and date on Paramount and made a lot of money. And Honk for Jesus, Save Your Soul, which is supposed to come out in September, also day and date. And I believe, don't take my word for it, I believe that both AMC and Regal are uh, planned to re uh, show the film. So... It's still early. The next Halloween movie comes out, I think, mid-October. So, um, it, it's early. It's too early to tell if uh, Regal or AMC or whoever will back out of distribution of this. Of course, the last Halloween movie was released a year ago. But, you know, we'll see what they do. Oh, yeah, and... I think Universal released Marry Me, although Marry Me did not do well in the box office, so we'll see. So this is kind of an interesting move, seeing as you have movies like Top Gun Maverick that are making a lot of money. You have a move. You have movies like um, The Black Phone that made way more money than I think anybody would have expected, over a hundred million dollars for it's not an original movie because it's based on a short story, but let's be honest, uh, probably 0.1% of people watched it because of the short story. Uh, there was no marketing power in that, uh, so I'm going to incorrectly call it an original IP. The Black Phone made over $100 million on an original IP with no A-listers. Sorry, I love Ethan Hawke, he's not an A-lister. Uh, an R-rated horror movie. I mean, horror is doing really well, but any R-rated original movie to make over a hundred million dollars 
is insane. And to not have someone like Brad Pitt attached to it, or a huge budget. But even the Black Phone was released, I think, like two or three weeks after its theatrical debut on on Peacock. And uh, Universal has been doing this also with uh, Minions. Minions released, I think, 31 days after its theatrical debut, and Jurassic World Dominion also 31 days after the theatrical debut. Which is interesting, especially for Minions, because kids' movies are the types of uh, movies that uh, have very long legs, and streaming kills these legs. Not to mention the fact that Minions just recently released in China, a major market, a market where piracy is also rampant. Um, They released it on digital before the Chinese theatrical release, which probably cut into that. Uh, And seeing how close Jurassic World Dominion is to $1 billion, I don't think it would be, uh, you know... uh, um, out of line to assume that if Jurassic World Dominion doesn't hit a billion dollars, it's because of Universal's, uh, you know, decision to release it so early. Now, you can say what you want about the uh, 90-day theatrical window. It definitely doesn't work for everything. It's definitely not a good idea for all types of movies. But you take something like Minions... And you take something, even like the Black Phone, you know, Minions and the Black Phone did very well in the box office. Don't get me wrong, but these are the types of movies, you know, kids' movies, movies based on uh, unfamiliar or uh, completely original ideas. And these are the types of movies that benefit from a longer theatrical window. I'm not saying go back to 90 days. Because not every movie is Top Gun Maverick. Not every movie has that kind of legs. And everyone's shitting on Warner Brothers right now. But I think their their thinking is exactly right. In that it should be taken on a case-by-case basis. Uh, there shouldn't be a hard, fast rule. You know, uh, 17 days, 45 days, 90 days. I think it's different for different movies. Um, But I think Halloween ends, I think, is what the movie's called. Although I doubt we'll get any sort of definitive ending. Uh, But (laughs) we'll see. Uh, Halloween ends, I think, releasing that day and date is kind of... It's not bad for Universal, but it is an obvious um, middle finger to the theaters. Uh, because obviously uh, good for Universal because Peacock is not doing fantastic. Uh, I don't I, I don't know the exact numbers, but the reports I've heard aren't great. So more content like a major movie, like not not like Marry Me, not like some chicken shit film that isn't good enough for theaters, like, a major franchise film will boost subscribers and will look good on Paramount's bottom line, and it also makes, uh, it also lets audiences uh, dissociate these big franchise movies, these movies that always would have gotten a um, theatrical release that um, would have never like released on streaming the same day before the pandemic, it lets the audience be like, you know... So, um, it, it just basically lets... Um, tell, trains audiences to uh, not expect or not have to go to the theater to watch these movies. Uh, which is good for Paramount because, I mean, not Paramount, Universal because, you know, that justifies the cost of a subscription even if you're buying all these other streaming services because, hey, I can see, uh, like, real deal movies. Like, not 
like theatrical VGX, like actual movies, and the the fact that it's being released in theaters still legitimizes that and is an important part to that. And I know that these deals are complicated. It's uh, at least in 2020. I don't know how it's being played right now, but uh, these deals aren't as simple as, oh, I'm just, you know, we're just going to release this in theaters and on streaming at the same time. Theaters, at least I think with the HBO Max deal in 2020, 2021, and I wouldn't be surprised if it still happens now. Uh, when a movie goes day and date, uh, the theaters do get some sort of cut of the streaming revenue or something like that. They get some type of extra money just for basically doing nothing, which is good. And hell, maybe it's more than they would have made otherwise. Who knows? I, d I don't know how these deals work. But unless these deals apply to every movie released day and date in perpetuity, this is probably not good for uh, the theaters because it, again, the fact that it's 2022, a movie like Top Gun Maverick can come out, show that people are willing to go to the theater and movie companies are still willing to do this and the um, audiences are still kind of being trained to based on some level accept this uh, even if it's not day and day you know accepting that a movie will be on peacock or whatever streaming service within a month uh, I mean that's bad for the theaters now this goes against my better judgment, you know, saying all of this, talking about this, kind of halfway advocating Universal not to do this, because at the end of the day, this is pretty pro-consumer. Consumers having the most choices possible is the best thing. And, you know, even though this is releasing on some shitty streaming service that only, uh, you know, whatever, a few million people have, I mean, it's still more options, giving consumers more options than they would have had. And that's good. That's a good thing. But at the same time, it, I love movie theaters. And I want them to do well. And this is an obvious attack on them. Uh, it's especially at a time, you know, when Halloween Ends is coming out. It will be during the dog days of a drought, which we are currently in. A drought of content. Um... And it, it's kind of it just, it's kind of, it kind of rings scummy. Because Halloween ends could have been like a good, you know, big thing, you know, what feed is needed. Uh, but, you know, it releasing on streaming at the same time kind of mitigates that. And if, again, I don't know the exact deal. I don't know how the money's being cut, and I'm just a guy. I'm just some guy who is going into a sophomore year of college. But if I was you, if I was AMC and Regal, and this is, you know, considering the fact that Halloween ends will probably make around a hundred million domestically, you know, give or take you know, 20, I wouldn't show Halloween ends, you know, I would let the indie theaters and uh, Cinemark, because Cinemark will basically show anything, you know, just take those profits and stand up to this, because, you know, Universal's just going to keep doing this, and they're kind of the biggest, 
they're the biggest perpetrator of it. I mean, again, releasing a family film on streaming, even if it's not on Peacock, just POVD, uh, a month after it released, after it made, what, like, 400 or $300 million in the domestic box office, it's, it's not good business, especially going into a drought like this. I mean, that takes money away from theaters, that takes money away from AMC and Regal. Eventually, they're going to have to put their foot down and say, you know, like, the deal was, I mean, originally, what they were saying is the deal was for tent poles, 45 days. But, I mean, Minions is a tent pole. Jurassic World Dominion was a tent pole. I mean, Universal is clearly not playing by the rules, and I think that the theaters are the ones that are paying for it and this Halloween ends thing I think is kind of uh, universal taking the mile after the theaters have been giving an inch and I think they need to put their foot down and say no we're not doing this we're going to uh, you know screw whatever deal we have screw whatever money we'd make from this uh, we we're going to have to invest in our future, especially when you see uh, Cineworld um, or whatever, the company that owns Regal just filed for bankruptcy, you know, so it's, it's a tough bullet to bite, but it, it's something that needs to be done now more than ever. It's, uh, I just, I don't know, for me, I, I saw the news, I, I can barely believe that they would do that, but, um, Looking at how, you know, Universal's track record, uh, Orphan, uh, First Blood or First Kill or whatever's performance in the box office, while not amazing, uh, still impressive, considering I haven't seen any marketing for the movie even, and just everything considered, I mean, it, it shouldn't be surprising, and it shouldn't be surprising that if... Universal, I mean, if Regal and AMC let this go, this keeps happening. Even after, you know, hopefully one day COVID will be some kind of, uh, you know, speck in the past. Um, Universal will still be doing this, you know, and by then the, the major theater chains will be in too deep if they, do, if they keep letting this happen. If they keep letting this happen, you know, taking whatever blood money they're being offered. Now, I don't, again, full disclaimer, not experienced. I don't care how many years you've been on the box office subreddit. You probably don't know what you're talking about. But this, all I can go by is what this sounds like. And it doesn't sound good. So, yeah, I don't know. Just, uh, <laughs> AMC and Regal, I know you're listening to my videos. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> All right.